there Cozy TV readers, it's Shannon and today we're going to have a sort of story time type video because I'm going to tell you all about my trip to New York City for BookCon. This video I'm really excited about. I'm going to show you a ton of pictures and I'm going to show you all the books that I got along as I go along and tell the story. So when I talk about the first bookstore I went to, I'll show you the books that I got there, etc. So the trip starts on Thursday. I left, I think it was May 29th. I got an 11 a.m. train from like the Boston area to New York City, Penn Station. It was like a four and four hour and 15 minute train ride. It really wasn't that bad. I wasn't worried about that the whole time. I was only worried about finding a taxi as soon as I got into the city. I walked out of Penn Station, which is the craziest place I think I've ever been, except for BookCon, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So I walked out, get out to the city. It's like, whoa, it's like, okay. We're in New York City, and I look around, I'm like, I am never going to get a taxi. But then I looked to my left, and I saw um, a line forming. What is that? So I went over to the line, and it turns out that outside of Penn Station, you can form lines to get taxis, and then taxis will just pull right up. So that was easy. Got a taxi, and that was probably the easiest time I had finding a taxi the whole weekend. It's a pain in the butt to find a taxi in New York City. Oh my god. Well, from there, I went straight to the hotel, and I got there, and I knew that Lainey from Ginger Eats, Lainey and Kayla from Book Doodles were already there. So I got there, I checked in, and I went upstairs, and I was so excited to see them. I was like, I just couldn't even like contain my smile. It was like, <laughs> walked in, it was like, oh my god, hi! And we took pictures and we chatted and they are just the best. So it was just the three of us for the whole afternoon pretty much. We went out to get dinner and we were walking around trying to find a place and we ended up at this little diner, which was very nice. It was kind of weird because we went around like 5.30, which is like dinner time, and we went, but it was all elderly people and I was just like sitting there thinking this is really weird. I got a really tasty panini that was really good and they had these really cool placemats with all of these drinks on them. Lainey stole one and it was great. And they had pictures of Marilyn Monroe on the wall. It was very New York. It was so cool. Um, and it did, I didn't realize till I got home and I was telling these stories to my family that I was like, oh my god, everybody our age in New York City probably eats dinner at like nine o'clock. <laughs> so there we were just, you know, eating dinner. 5.30 with all the elderly people. It was nice though and the food was really good so that was fun. Our hotel was, I mean, prime location. It was so fantastic. We took a taxi back to the hotel later on that day. We came a different way than we all had arrived to the hotel. So we were coming up a different side of the street. We were like, that is the coolest building I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if it was Kayla Laney or Kenya was with us at that point and they were like, um, that's the Javits Center. It was literally like, I mean, a hundred feet away from our hotel. It was... <laughs> prime location um, and our hotel room was so small we all we all bonded very quickly we clicked so fast and I wasn't really worried about it being awkward or us not getting along I knew we were gonna get along I wasn't expecting how quickly and how like close we were right away it was just so cool I felt like we had known each other for years and it was just the best. I love those girls so, so much, and I miss them. But Thursday night, we were going to go to Times Square, and we were going to go to the original Cold Stone, and we were going to meet up with Cassidy from uh, Cassidy Von Shea, her channel, Bria from Cool Beans Books, and um, Sivvy from Cookies Addiction. Like I said, with the other three girls that I roomed with, we all clicked right away. Like, it was just, it boggles my mind. Like, in the moment, it just didn't even occur to me, like, how weird it was that we were all clicking so well. Looking back, I'm like, we're just, we're just the best of friends. After the ice cream, we kind of walked around. Sivvy is from New York, so she was a great help in showing us, like, you know, where things were or what to do and just, like, how to get a freaking taxi in Times Square. We went to the Disney store. Oh, wait, my first purchase in New York City was this Maleficent mug from the Disney store. If you can see, it says Maleficent, and it's so cool. And I accumulated a, mu a whole bunch of mugs when I was in New York. I don't know why I did that. We walked around Times Square for a while, took a bunch of pictures. We were there till like 11.30 midnight and that was, I mean, that's when we actually left the area. It took us 45 minutes to find a taxi because Cassidy was by herself. She was staying in her room by herself. So the four of us rooming together wanted to make sure she got a taxi first. We had to get two taxis. It was just like so hard. And I think I have a funny picture of Cassidy and Kenya trying to get a taxi. I'll either put it, I'll put it somewhere. Then we went back to the hotel. I think we were all so tired from traveling. We all kind of crashed. So then on Friday, we woke up, ate breakfast at the hotel because it was free. And of course we're going to eat breakfast for free if it's offered to us. We went to Madame Tussauds and I have so 
many pictures from Battery Two Souls. I'll probably just put my favorites up as I'm talking about it right now um, because there's so many. It's obnoxious. <laughs> we had the best time. I went with Kayla, Kenya, and Lainey, my roommates. For the rest of the video, I'll just call them the 604 ladies because that was our hotel room number. Battery Two Souls was really cool. At first, I was like, this is the weirdest experience of my life. <laughs> I, I kept like turning and I was like, okay, they're not real people. They're not real people. I was just very jumpy. You obviously walk in the bottom floor of Madame Tussauds and then they bring you up an elevator to the top floor so you can make your way down to the exit. And the elevator is open. I mean, there's windows, but they're all open. And so we're just standing. We're like sitting in the back of the elevator. And I look out and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. You can see Times Square. Like, so cool, so cool. And it did look very cool until I looked down. And that was probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I looked down and it was so high and I immediately scooched to the front of the elevator because I was like terrified. There was a whole Marvel section which was really cool but they didn't have Captain America and I was like, what are you doing? I found out that Lenny Kravitz is like my twin. I'll put that picture up. Some of them were so much shorter or just so much taller or just totally different than you would think they were because they're life size. Like they do them like to a T and it was just weird. Like Katy Perry is really short in case you wanted to know. <laughs> when we were in the Madame Tussauds gift shop, I got two mugs. <laughs> the first one I got was Marvel related. It is a Thor mug and it's awesome. And then the other thing that I got was a One Direction mug. <laughs> it was just like, you know what, when in New York, like when else am I going to get a One Direction mug? Also, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, look at how old these pictures are. <laughs> I think it's freaking hysterical and I there's no way I was going to leave it there. I mean, really, no. Madame Tussauds we headed on over to the Hard Rock Cafe. We went inside and there's this big guitar over the stairs leading down to the restaurant and then there's all this like rock and roll stuff like uh, there was Adam Levine's guitar, Paul McCartney's guitar and then they had um, the actual clothing of the Beatles and all their instruments. It was very very cool to look around and then in the bathroom there was a giant picture of Justin Timberlake. I was like okay. <laughs> I actually ordered my first alcoholic beverage because I turned 21 in February but I haven't really gone out because I'm very exciting um, but I ordered my first drink which was pretty cool in New York City at the Hard Rock Cafe so yeah that was exciting then we headed back to the hotel and we filmed a couple of collab videos all of us have put them up by now so if you want to check them out I'll put the links to all of our collab videos down below there's four of them so that's a good time if you want to watch each and every single one of them and at this point I had like a throbbing headache and I feel really bad because I think I complained the whole weekend about having a headache because I didn't have tea for 24 hours. Well, at that point, it was 48 hours the next day. I did have a green tea from Starbucks and like one really weak tea in the morning from the hotel. But I was like dying. <laughs> I didn't have any hook on the needed. So that was rough. We rested for a little bit filmed the videos, then we went to Union Square and over there is the four story, beautiful, amazing Barnes & Noble. We met up with Cassidy from Cassidy Von Shea again and then we saw Cassidy with a C from Sassy Cassidy 5 who was super nice and she brought along her sister Carly who was also so nice. Everybody was so nice. We all got along so well. Oh my gosh, this Barnes & Noble, you guys, oh my god, it was like walls of books. It was like no other Barnes & Noble I've ever seen. It's four stories of beautifulness and they had the Beauty and the Beast rolly ladders and I saw it and I bolted over but then there was a sign on it saying employees only and I was like that is so cruel but I took a picture on it anyway. <laughs> I bought four books there thinking that those were going to be the only books that I bought the whole weekend because I was like oh I'm going to get a ton of books the next tomorrow at BookCon so I'll show you those books that I got now. So the first book that I got at that Barnes & Noble on Friday is Take Me On by Katie McGarry. I'm reading it right now so it's not in the thingy majiggy. The next one I got is Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes and I believe that me and the 604 ladies are going to be doing a read-along um, of this maybe in July. We're not sure but we'll tell you the details when we know. The next one that I got is Death Swarm by Leah Saipas and I I have been wanting this since it came out. I just haven't picked it up yet for whatever one reason or another. This one had a sticker on it and it said autographed. And I was like, oh, so I bought it. That like was more incentive to buy it, you know. Um, and the signature is right here. And then the last book that I got at the Barnes & Noble was Deep Blue by Jennifer Donnelly. And I actually have never read a mermaid book. So I really, really want to. And I bought it. And it's beautiful. So... Also, while we were in that Barnes & Noble, a really nice girl came up to us and she was like, Hey, I watch your videos on YouTube. And we were like, what? It's 
so weird and cool when people come up to you. She was so, so nice. We took a picture with her and everything. Thank you for saying hi. After we left Barnes & Noble, we all headed on over to the Strand. The Strand is amazing. It is just so cool. It's just such a quirky, cool bookshop. It's just the coolest place ever. I went in. I was like, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not because I just bought four books. I'm going to be getting a ton of books tomorrow. I'm just not going to buy anything. But <laughs> the Strand is so cheap you guys like we went up to the ya section almost all of their hardcovers whether they're new releases or not are nine dollars their paperbacks are anywhere between or at least i saw anywhere between five dollars and nine dollars and i was just like this is amazing so i did buy one book defiance by cj redwine i've wanted this forever and i saw it there oh i took the price tag off so i don't remember but it, it wasn't more than eight dollars while we were there we also ran into jess from prices wong it was just a chance thing she was there at the same time we were so we took pictures with her she was a sweetheart and then all of us i think there was a group of 10 of us all went over to tgi fridays and union squares so are right in the same area and um we um ate dinner <laughs> just completely lost my train of thought we were in there for three hours and we I mean because the wait staff was a little slow but it didn't matter because literally we talked the whole time it was like a whole group of old friends got together we all got along so well we talked about everything from books to personal things it was just I loved it actually funny story when we were walking into Friday's Danny from um, performing book self who was at Barnes & Noble with us did I say her name I don't think I did, but she was at Barnes & Noble with us, and so she came to dinner with us too. She walked in, and the door to get in was a, one of those revolving doors, and she walked in, and she's like cracking up. I'm like, what? And she's like, I've never been through one of those. I was like, oh my god! So I should have been taking a picture of Danny's face like as she was laughing, but I, instead I took a picture of the door. So... There's a picture of the door, but it was really funny. <laughs> After Fridays, we all got our taxis back to our hotels because we wanted to get back generally early so we could go to bed because we knew we were going to have to wake up really early for book con the next day. Actually, when we got back, though, Lainey started to do like a dramatic reading of Fifty Shades of Grey, and it was literally one of the funniest moments of my life. <laughs> After that, we kind of just crashed. It was a long day, and we had a huge day ahead of us. Saturday, we woke up at 4.30 a.m., <sighs> got ready really quickly we got to the Javits Center at a little before six o'clock actually and got in line for will call there was no one there really there was one girl in front of us and her name was Paige and she has a channel who which I will link down below she is amazing we all kind of bonded we were just chilling waiting that was when the first like viewer came up to say hi it was so cool she came over and she asked for a picture it was so nice thank you for tweeting the picture at me getting into BEA or book con was a whole freaking issue so we each got one of these badges but getting this little baby was a pain in the butt I went up gave the guy my thingy so I could get my badge and he was like this is invalid and I was like no 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 I paid for it can you like look up my name can you scan it again he's like nope I can't help you frankly he was being quite rude and I can't deal with rude people I was overwhelmed from meeting so many people I had a mental breakdown I completely started like bawling and it was so embarrassing I felt so bad I was holding up the other girls from going in it was a whole debacle and I had to go down to the BEA side and I had to go back up and then I went to a different woman she looked up my last name and then I and then she handed me the badge like that was it it was all for nothing I was so mad we got into another line to actually get into book Con itself which we were in from like 7 30 to 9 we met up with so many booktubers there was like a big circle of us sitting in line I have a picture of that somewhere it was just so surreal and again we all clicked we were laughing and just giggling like crazy people the whole time it was awesome by the time they opened the doors for book con we were all like ready to go like we're gonna go in we're gonna get books and it's gonna be awesome and <sighs> when we all got the email saying that power reader day which is what it was last year was now being called book con we thought it was kind of just a name change they added a couple celebrities to get more people to come we weren't notified that it was a completely different event. So, we did get free books, which was amazing, phenomenal. I got a couple that I'll show you in a second that I am so excited about. But I got seven books, and I didn't get to talk to any publishers. I, it was just, mm, yeah. And the books that we did get, we really had to fight for. Like, it was doggy dog scary it was crowded it was chaos all i have to say is that i'm definitely going to be going for the multiple day bea thing next year not the public book con day because it was just 
madness. But I want to show you the books that I got because I'm really, really excited about them. The first three were kind of just, there were a couple people just walking around handing out books and of course we weren't really getting any so we were like, give it to me! So we took as much as we could. <laughs> the first one is called The Illustrated Happiness Trap. It's by Russ Harris and Bev Aisbet and it's just like a psychology type there's a giant bug. Ooh. This one is an ARC. This isn't available until September of this year. It's called uh, The Beautiful Ashes by Janine Frost. And I believe this is a paranormal or fantasy new adult, which I haven't read one of those. So I'm kind of excited to dive into this one. I just haven't really heard anything about it, so I don't know. This next one maybe is a new adult, but it's definitely adult, I think. And it's Jane's Melody by Ryan Winfield. It's This is a finished copy, though, I think. Yeah, this is a finished copy. Don't know anything about this one either, but I was like, okay free books. Now for the ones that we had to fight to the death for, practically. The, this first one, I'm so freaking excited about. I saw that we could get a chance to get this book and I was literally like, I don't care if I get anything else for the rest of the day as long as I get this book. It is Landline by Rainbow Rowell. <sighs> this doesn't come out till July. We got art copies. I love the back too. Look at how pink it is and pretty. Rainbow Rowell is my favorite author right now and probably will be one of my all-time favorite authors forever. I cannot wait to read this book. I can't even tell you. <laughs> the next three books I got signed, and they were the only books I got signed all day, and actually the first books I ever got signed, like personalized signed. I've never been to a signing before, so it was pretty exciting. We sat in line for, I mean, more than two hours, I'm pretty sure. And the reason why this line was such a fuss is because there was this book, Talon by Julie Kagawa. This is her new dragon book. It's already been picked up by Universal Studios or something to be a film, something like that, and it doesn't come out till November of this year. This is a big deal, and I feel so lucky that I got my hands on a copy. And Julie Kagawa was so sweet, she signed it. To Shannon. The next one that I got is Lies We Tell Ourselves by Robin Talley, who also signed it. It's at the bottom there. It says, Shannon, thanks for reading. This is now till October. I don't know anything about this one at all. Um, she was super nice. I don't know anything about this book. And then the next one that I got is called Let's Get Lost by Addie Alsed. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but it's something like that. And this isn't out until August. And this is being compared to Paper Towns, but the author said that it has more of a road trip aspect to it and it has multiple um, points of view. This author was my favorite of the three. Such a nice guy. Like, ridiculously nice. I want to show you. It says, for Shannon, go on, get lost, enjoy it with his little signature. So those are all the books that I got at BookCon. It's not a bad little chunk of books. It was just not kind of what we were expecting and we all kind of felt very misled. But we got to go to the BookTuber meetup directly after the signing for those three books. And it was unbelievable. Easily my favorite part of the whole entire weekend. It was it was so crazy. We got there late because we were at the signing. It was all already started. And there were so many people, and we were just, we, like, the group I was with, we were, like, walking through, like, oh, my God, what is happening? And immediately people started coming over to say hi. It was amazing. I can't thank you the people that came up to say hi enough. I met so many booktubers, pe people that I didn't know, people that I did know, and then the most craziest, amazingest, most greatest part were the viewers slash, like, f I feel so weird saying fans, but... Like, just people that watch my videos that came up to say hi, like, it was so cool. It was, like, the first time I realized that, like, I had, like, like fans. I feel so weird saying that, but I always think of, like, view my viewers as, like, you know, people I talk to, like, friends. Like, I don't think of you guys as, like, like, fans of me. Like, you know what I mean? But I met a couple of awesome people, and there was this one boy, and he was, like, shaking, and I was just like, oh, my God, what is that? So many people asked for pictures, which I was more than happy to take pictures with everybody. I can't even thank people enough for even watching my videos. I can't even grasp my mind over what that meetup was. There was one boy who had me sign his copy of Clockwork Princess. He had a bunch of booktubers sign it. And he asked me, I was like, I cannot do that. But I did. And I literally, I wrote Shannon and then in parentheses, Cozy Tea Reads. Because I didn't know what the heck to do. I had never signed anything before in my entire life. That was so cool. His name was Ferdinand. Hi, Ferdinand. Yeah, so people came out during the booktuber meetup. And then people would just stop me and other booktubers as we were walking through the crowds of people just throughout the day. It was the craziest and most amazing experience of my life. <laughs> oh. 
It was insanity. Another really cool moment at the booktuber meetup was I met Jesse from Jesse the Reader and Ariel from Ariel Bassett. So I was kind of like minding my own business, like standing. I wasn't like moving around because I didn't know what to do with myself. All of a sudden I see like Jesse coming through the crowd. Like his arms are like up like this. <laughs> and he's like going through the crowd like this and he just comes in for a hug. I was like, aw. He was the nicest guy ever. He took pictures and he's just so, so nice. Thank you for coming to say hi to me. That like made my day. And Ariel also came over to me to say hi, which just doesn't make any sense to me. But um, she came over and was like, I'm going to touch your hair. And then I touched her hair and it was like a hair fest. And they were the nicest people, so was everybody else. It was just insane. <laughs> what do you even, I don't even know what to say about it. It's so freaking cool. I loved meeting everybody, booktubers and viewers, everybody. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Whew. So after the booktuber meetup, we were kind of all exhausted. We kind of sat in a little circle and we were just like, let's go back to the hotel. Me and the 604 ladies plus Riley from Riley Marie 1196 went back to our hotel and we just hung out. We just chilled for a little while. We ordered Domino's pizza and <laughs> just talked. Actually, when we got to the hotel after BEA, we were so tired. We were on the sixth floor, but I guess when we first got into the elevator, we hit floor four. We were in room 604, but we started knocking on the door for 404 and we used two of our of our like room keys. We didn't knock because we, you know, we didn't think anybody was in there. Then we noticed like three minutes after being at the door that it was not our room and we like bolted down the hallway <laughs> and we were just cracking up getting on the elevator we were so tired it was ridiculous later on that day there was a book tour meet up at the strand at five o'clock that was a much calmer chiller meetup um it was really really nice we got to talk to people a lot more it was just a lot less chaotic because there were obviously less people because you can't fit 10,000 people into the strand you know um it was really really nice and since we didn't get half as many books at BookCon as we thought we were going to we all kind of were like I need some retail therapy so we all went a little crazy at the strand what can you do? So I got five books at the Strand that night. Don't regret a thing. The first one is The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chainani. I really, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I first heard about this, I mean, a week ago on Jillian from Bookish and Nerdy, her channel. It sounds really good. I'm really excited about this. Very excited. Then I got Erased by Jennifer Rush. This is the sequel um, in the duology. I think it's a duology of... Um, Altered by Jennifer Rush. Um, Lainey was actually going to get this at first and then she was going to put it back and I was like, no, no, I will take that. So I took it. It was $9 and I really want to read the sequel, so you know. Then I got Trouble by Non Pratt, which I did not even know was available in the United States. And it's this beautiful cover that I have never seen before and it was $9. And then I come home and I was like on the computer, do to do, and I see that it doesn't isn't available in the United States till June 10th in this cover in hardback. So basically, I got it a week early at the Strand for $9. <laughs> okay! Then I got Hemlock by Kathleen Peacock, and that rhymes. I did a live show with the girls from Magi Bookshelf a while back, I think it was for Ignite Me, and they talk about this book so much, so I was like, okay, I'll just get it. And it was like $5, because it's paperback. And then, the last beauty that I got at the Strand is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Moss. <gasps> Oh, this is all of the prequel novellas to the Throne of Glass tril um, trilogy series, um, and it's beautiful. At the stream, we met up with Paige, that British friend that I talked about that we met really early in the day, and we all went over to Barnes & Noble, we kind of just scoped around, we all went and sat in the romance section in the back, because no one ever hangs out over there, or no one goes to like the romance section, so we were just like, let's just go sit. And we sat there for a little while. I actually picked up All Lined Up by Cora Cormack. This is her brand new, new adult book. I already read it. I read it on the train ride home. Really liked it. I'll talk about it in my June wrap-up. This was my, actually my first Cora Cormack book, so that's exciting. That was actually the last book that I got the whole weekend. We just hung out. We got Starbucks, and then we, when we left Barnes & Noble, we left and we went to the park that's like right across the street. It was beautiful. The whole thing is like enclosed by trees, and there were these little green tables, and we bothered the people next to us to take pictures of us. It was a good time. It totally stunk saying goodbye, but then the 604 ladies and I went back to the hotel. We hung out. We got Subway. Um, we watched the weirdest TV show I've ever seen in my life. It was called Sing Your Face Off or something, and it was these has-been celebrities pretend, like, performing as, you know, these really big 
celebrities like they're so I was it was so weird we were exhausted we crashed the next morning we woke up did a couple of collab videos said goodbye um there were so many hugs and I just miss them so much and it was the best weekend one of the coolest experiences of my entire life if not the coolest just having that many people say that they watch my videos and just meeting those people and meeting the booktubers and I feel like I have lifelong friends now. I It's just amazing how well we all got along and I cannot wait for next year. Oh my goodness, it was so amazing. I'm sorry this video was so long. I hope you weren't too bored. I hope you liked the pictures. That is it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you, Ellen. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!